This is the Snap Deck. If you've been following the evolution of this project so far, this video is gonna be the last one of the saga. You see, it all started out when my grandmother said that she had some difficulty holding her cards and somehow we ended up here. I have one card left. Well, this just got real. <laughs> Indeed it did, Mimo. Cause now we've not built something only good for hand and foot, but also suitable for those endless games of Uno, trading card games, and even Magic the Gathering. To be honest, I've never really gotten into many of the popular card-based hobbies, but for about a decade now, I have been diving headfirst into 3D printing and modeling. No, not that kind of modeling, this kind of modeling. So I chose to lean into what I know and combine it with input from the community to create this modular playing card holder. But before I show you how to use it, Let's go over why we're building in the first place. Every good solution starts off as a problem. So what are we solving here? We want a way for people to manage loads of cards in an organized, visible, and functional way. Maybe your hands are a bit shaky, or they're small, or grow tired after hours of playing cards. Or perhaps you want to be able to juggle other things while playing cards like a score or a life counter, a timer, or even a Tootsie Pop in my grandmother's case. Or maybe you just need the ability to display what feels like an entire deck of cards at one time at a show or convention. This need for a playing card holder is simple in theory, but in practical terms, it presents a plethora of other requirements such as stability, maintaining card health, portability, versatility, ease of use, even 3D printer friendliness. And there's much, much more that I'll try to address as we move into the design. But to understand where we want to go, we first have to understand where we've been. The first version of the holder was a quick and dirty prototype that probably took a total of two hours to design, iterate, and get printing. It served its job well for Mimo's hand and foot games, but had many oversights like requiring supports where they could have been avoided, the overuse of magnets, which are always fun, but not strictly necessary here, and the mag on the back not being wide enough for anything over 13 cards, with the whole thing being purpose-built with very little versatility when it comes to other games. I did find the bend radius to be really nice with all the stability provided, and although it looked aggressive, when you consider the gap in each slot, it puts less pressure on the cards than most people's hand grip. However, I do realize that it's not really doing a great job of hiding your cards depending on where you put them in the holder. And if you have some really expensive cards or thicker cards and sleeves, and you don't even want to think about them being bent, then maybe it's not for you. As a final note on this version, we have the Tootsie Pop holder, which seems like the smallest part of the design, but was actually what got my mind cooking on if there are other modules that we could add. Which brings us into version two. It's inspired by the stackable Rummy Cube holders and has a straightened out profile. I aimed to develop a solid base unit so that we could then build upon it and customize it for each person's needs. Playing hand and foot, just slot on this nice new wide stack holder to support up to 20 cards. It even has a locking tab on the back to secure it while you're on the move. Did you end up getting yourself into a game of hand, knee, and foot? You can slot another one on the other side. Are you getting antsy during a close match? Calm down with this planetary fidget toy or open up a Tootsie Pop and slide on this reliable holder to sheath your yummy snack. With all this modularity, I definitely thought that I was onto something cool, but there are a couple blaring issues. First of which is stability. And my first attempt to address it was this little stabilizer attachment, but the real root of the problem was the holder itself having a very touchy balance point, and I wouldn't want you to need an attachment just to use the project on its own. On top of that, the slots aren't all standardized, making development quite annoying, and depending on which way the print was oriented in, the fit for each nubbin is a little different. Some of them were so loose that they just fell out, and others of them were so tight that it was difficult to get them in. No joke to be made there. So let's hop into Fusion 360 together, hide away version one and two, and get into to the main improvements for version 3. First off, I widened the body for stability, reshaped the card slots to provide a bit more room for sleeves and larger sets, and I made sure that the cards were properly spaced to allow sufficient visibility when all four channels were being used. An added bonus to this adjustment is that the flaps are a bit thicker, providing greater strength, and it's easier for people with poor hand eye coordination to use. After that, I standardized the slot profiles across the entire design and flipped around any slots along the bottom so that you wouldn't need to remove whatever module was on top before sliding the bottom in. Further, the little nubbins in the back have been adjusted based on their orientation while printing, so we should be able to have a good press fit connection on each module. Of course, all printers handle tolerances differently, so if it's too hard to slide on a module, you might need to sand down any points of contact. And if it's too loose or wears out over time, I've included both holes for magnets and convenient M3 mounting points throughout the design. Oh, and by the way, I love this black version because it looks so sleek and clean, but I did just finish up this transparent version that is so freaking cool. 
I mean, you can see the cards through the channels. My recommendation would be to try press fitting first, and if it doesn't work, just secure them with M3 screws. The magnets are cool, but when you have a module with more than a little amount of weight, they quickly fall out. Of course, putting a lot of commenters at ease, I also applied some non-slip rubber strips to the bottom of each card holder that keeps it from dancing all over the table while you're playing. Now that we have extra space in the body after making it wider, we can address a few of the comments that were talking about portability. I decided to bore out two channels and design in a nested handle, sort of like a suitcase. I also did include some optional magnet holes should you want the handle to stay snapped in place. We can lock it in and keep it from escaping with these little dovetail style pins. Do be aware that while you're using these handles, people will either be scared of you because you're about to dominate the card table, or they'll look at you a bit funny because of your weird shaped purses. And a final note on this regular body design, I started adding in a little channel across the bottom to accept some small wheel weights and make the thing really feel like it's grounded to the table. But after testing out the new, thicker design, it seems rather unnecessary, especially if you plan on tossing any modules on the back. And speaking of modules, this is where it gets really fun. You've already seen the sliding 20 card mag holder in the previous version, but I made a few variations to expand its functionality. One of which holds an entire deck of cards while looking very similar in design. And this one here can store up to 50 standardized sized dice, should you ever require that amount of randomized decisive power. I also reached out to a few commenters who wanted to use this project for MTG, which again, I don't really have much experience with, but I leaned on their advice and they said they wanted a module that can top load their cards, so I made this. It can very easily support over 100 sleeved cards, and I know sleeves can all be different dimensions based on their seller and the type of card, but I did my best to add enough tolerance to support the majority of users. I even put these little slits in the mag so you can place dividers to either separate the cards or keep them standing up should you not have enough to fill out the space. Another variation of the module is this one, which features an outward facing slot to display a single or a small group of cards to players around the table. Enough with card storage though. I made this stabilizer piece that spans most of the back should you find yourself a few wine glasses deep in the night and really wanting that extra tipping security. And if you want to accessorize the holder, I made a really simple label that you can customize using the text feature in your slicer, uh, another editing program, or even some vinyl or markers. Now moving around to the sides, say you have an issue with people consistently taking over 10 minutes to lay down a single card, you can pop on the sand timer mount to keep their delays in check. Or maybe you finish your turn, but everyone's so caught up in conversation that people start to wonder, who's going next? Well, just slap on this module that uses 3D printed threads to clamp down on a bell and ring it to let the person next to you know that it's time to go. Just another thing to be aware of, this can get quite annoying quite fast. Of course, we also still have the enormous blinders, the Tootsie Pop holder, the side mounted stabilizer, and the planetary fidget toy all ready to go from the last version. Now just slightly improved with minor changes to their profiles. I had another commenter suggest a phone holder, which is absolutely genius, especially for games where you need to have some sort of website or instruction set pulled up while playing. I think the attachment that was most requested was a life slash score counter. I used a few of these counter wheels from this project over on printables that was originally remixed from this project on Thingiverse. And they simply used some basic leaf springs to lock each digit in place. And then I simply designed around it to mainly support three digits and be compatible with our snap deck. It turned out to be a bit more satisfying to play with than I thought, so if you're tracking something important, make sure to hold yourself back. And what's this, you ask? It's a joiner. Its sole purpose is to enable users to create mega holders. To accompany it, I designed a bunch of body variations like the stubby version, should you want to not have that much extra length, and this curved version that brings back the look from the first holder I made, but now with a less aggressive curve that also features those upgraded channels we made. If you want to really lock them in together, they can be secured using these M3 holes on the top edge of each body. The sky really becomes the limit, or I guess your desk becomes the limit. But why stop there, right? Maybe you wanna play card footsies with the person across from you, or just display your cards in two different directions at once. For that, you can use this back joiner module to snap everything together. The whole concept here is being able to create, customize, and combine any modules you want to achieve the most optimal snap deck for your own application. Oh my gosh, what have I built? 
I did my best to design and develop all the most requested modules from the past few videos. And although this is the end of the cardholder saga, I still have a couple things on my list that I want to finish designing. Some are community requests, like having a light that illuminates your cards to make them easier to see, or having a wrap around dice roller. And some are based on my own observations, like wanting to make modules that actually open out the back. So when you make a mega holder, you don't have all these conflicting sideways opening containers. But if you come up with any other cool ideas for this project or another project entirely, you can always let me know. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and I'll catch you in the next one.